Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth and final episode of the fifth series of Matchbook on the EBPL podcast. My name is Paul, I'm the Adult Services Librarian here at East Brunswick Public Library. Thanks for sticking with us so far. If anybody would like to submit any questions, we're always happy to take recommendations from our readers and I'll work on them and I'll ruminate on it and bring it out back to the listeners as a way of providing really the the best recommendations possible based on whatever genres or specific types of literature you like to read. If you'd like to submit a question to the Matchbook form, we have on our website, if you're on our homepage, under the Explore tab, in the Adult Reading subheading, there's, it says EBPL Matchbook. You can request anything, any type of literature, anything you're looking at, any interest you might have, please submit it. I'll definitely reply to you, but also I might use it as inspiration for the show, as I've done numerous times on the podcast so far. So today, somebody had a great request for books set during winter, which is a great question, especially for now, as I'm huddled up in the library, even with a jacket on and a space heater. So makes it feel extra appropriate. So definitely going to give you some really great recommendations. They're all fiction books, but... I feel like that's okay because I wanted to pick and choose books that have all different styles and all different genres and really do different things within the tremendously wonderful and varied works of the fiction genre. The first recommendation I have is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Bachman is a Swedish author known for such books as Anxious People and A Man Called Otto that came out last year with a Tom Hanks film. But he tells, he likes to tell these sweeping stories, these grand, overarching, beautiful, sweeping, dramatic notes in their lives. They all have the similar effect that they are touching, emotional, and uplifting. That his area, Anxious People, I'd say, was a little different. Definitely the best one I've read by him. Bear Town is excellent as well. And I'd say what makes it great is that it felt like a bit of a departure for him. Bear Town is named after a town, it's literally called Bear Town, a tiny community nestled deep in the Swedish forests in northern Sweden. It's a town that is said to be on the decline. It's not doing well, but it clings to something local that really unifies everybody within the town. And that is ice hockey, which conveniently enough can be played on most lakes in the area for most of the year. So very convenient for them. And we follow the hopes and dreams of a junior hockey team that has made it to the national competition. And we see really what it's like, it. I wouldn't call it young adult literature, but you do get a sense for the characters at this point in their life and to have such an import foisted upon them in such an unlikely, unlikely event that they really didn't see coming at all. So they react, obviously, very differently. The pressure is too great. Some also exhibit tremendous courage within circumstances. So it's interesting to see it from that perspective. And there's such a realism to this book that doesn't exist, I'd say, in his other books. And it really might weigh on the reader emotionally rather than his other books, which elicit such joyous and evocative feelings. This could be like crushing at times, but you also get a very good look into the collective feelings and mind of the town and how it's based around the hopes of this team and the collective conscious of the community itself. So in order to see that, we really get to know so many characters so in-depthly. And I, I think this is one of the great qualities of Bachman's work, is that he populates his pages with so many characters. There's such a diversity of character to them, which makes it feel so fleshed out and wonderfully achieved. Definitely give that a look if you like books about hockey, even if you don't, though. If you like books about a small, close-knit community going through hard times and yearning for the best of what they could be and also if you're looking for a series as this is the first in the series now is up to three books so from the realism of Bachman's story i'd like to transport us to something entirely different to the magical realism of the snow child by eowyn ivy 
in which we follow a young married couple looking to really escape their lives in the United States. So what they do is they pick up one day and isolate themselves from friends and family by moving to Alaska, hoping they could homestead there. The idea was that solitude would be their friend and together they would lean on each other for mental emotional support and really emerge stronger than they were before. So if you've read a book before, you'll know that this isn't going to work out for them because that was the first act in the story. What happens is they are crushed by the loneliness and isolation until one night a snow child, I guess as it were, just appears outside of their house. They can't really get much information about her, don't really know where she came from, the neighbors have no information, she won't really say anything. So much of the main conflict comes from wanting the child to come live with them, be part of their home, make them into a happy family, but they have trouble understanding her, trouble understanding where she comes from, where she goes at night, why she won't reach out to them and live with them if she doesn't seem to have any other family around. Much of the inspiration for this was based on a Russian fairy tale, and the wife in the story believes that this is the reincarnation of a fairy tale, like, come alive. Whilst the husband is skeptical, hence there's a magical realism element to that premise in that it's based on something fantastical. I don't really want to give away the ending, but I'd just say it's nice that it blends what we see as magical realism, something that feels too far-fetched and really grounds it in reality in a unique and clever way, in a way that makes both uh, logical sense but also emotional sense for the characters that we come to know and love throughout the story. And also, in also the contrast to what I was saying with Bachman's stories, this has extremely few characters. So if that's more your speed, you only want to keep track of a few characters and find that more of what you would be interested in. It's mostly just man and wife, snow child, and a fox, which is easy to keep track of because it is the only fox in the book. So definitely check that one out if that feels right for you. The last book I wanted to mention, also very different from the previous two, is One by One by Ruth Ware. She rose to fame with The Turn of the Key and has written a number of successful and really dark, intricate mystery novels. So this one is set at a chalet on a beautiful rustic mountain, cozy fires, wonderful breakfast, everything you could eat, just idyllic in every sense of the word. And what we have is a corporate retreat staying there and an avalanche hits, which traps them in the chalet and conveniently enough for the author limits the number of people who could be investigated for the murders that are taking place at the chalet. I'd say what Ware does incredibly well is unravel the story with a pace that befits the characters, plot, and slowly clarifies everybody's relationships with one another, scheming, double-crossing, and allegiances, everything like that, who you can trust, who you can't trust, backstories, all of that come out of the woodwork and made known as a result of people and how neurotic they become, that every person they know could possibly be the killer, and you just have to live with them until they find out who's actually doing it. So if you'd like to take a back seat and enjoy the thrill of figuring out what happens, or being a proactive armchair detective and trying to piece together the clues, you could read it in either way and really enjoy this one, and sit by the fire, have something nice to eat, and hope that there's not a um, corporate retreat with a murderer anywhere in your vicinity. So definitely check that one out if you like a good mystery. And any of those books, if you like reading something that feels seasonally appropriate, as I do. Hopefully you do as well. This concludes the fifth season of Matchbook for Us. So thank you all for joining us. I hope you get season six out sometime later in 2024. Thank you to Melissa Hosek for editing this episode. And if you'd like to hear more of all the wonderful series we have on the podcast, please go to ebpl.org. 
backslash podcast to find more.